and Jesus, all of them, they're messengers of Islam as well. We just believe that, you know, over time, people change the teachings of the Bible, of the Quran, I mean, of the uh, the Judaic books, the, uh, the Torah. And so Quran is supposed to be the last and final book. But I really don't, I think you know nothing about Islam. I mean, I'm just sitting here listening to your radio station. And like you, Savage, who all these other hand in Okay, uh, listen, Jay, uh, Jay, in a bubble and you want to preach lies, let me ask you this. Um, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, terrorists of the day, are they not? Listen, these groups... Uh, that's a simple question, yes or no? These groups just came out. Like, you're, you're, you're basing some kind of, like... Uh, all right, let me ask you this. In the name of Islam, is terrorism a problem in 2015 going into 16? Yes, terrorism is a problem, but you're defining terrorism as like a Muslim issue when like Well, I don't see I don't see any Christians or Jews or Hindus or anybody else taking part in terrorism. What? I don't see any Christians, Jews, Hindus or any other faith taking part in terrorism modern day. Who's threatening the world? Who's killing? Who's killing people at concerts? Who's killing people in the workplace? Who's lining people up on the shores of the Middle East and beheading them? Is it Catholics? Who's killing Christians in the Middle East? Muslims. And you come here with this garbage that I'm just, I don't know anything about Islam. I never claimed to be a scholar on Islam. I know one thing about it. It's a cancer. It's a cancer in society, and if Muslims want to change that perception, well, they'd better stand up and start shouting. When you have the, uh, the leader of Iran saying Muslims have to uh, fix their own image, there's a problem. When a terrorist is telling you that Muslims have to fix their own image, don't you think that's a problem, Jay? Muhammad. And you judge it by the Quran, which honestly, nowadays you can just Google English translation. <laughs> hey, everything in the Quran. talk about not listening. Talk about uh, you got keeping your head up where the sand is. One more time, do you do you know who Rouhani is in Iran? Listen, I know you're just trying to get me to answer your silly questions. Uh, 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 silly. So you're in denial, Jay. Don't waste everybody's time here on the Savage Nation, okay? People are working, they're commuting. They, you, you're talking gibberish. You are the problem. Okay, political correctness is domestic terrorism. Okay, and you're not even taking part in co political correctness. You're just lying. You're lying because you don't want to hear the truth. Islam is a cancer. The world knows it. Even theocratic leaders know it. They have an image problem. Okay, it's, it's a problem across the world. Everybody is concerned about Muslim terrorists. Kevin at WMAL, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hey, how you guys doing? Um, real quick, I, I was going to address uh, two examples, one here in the States and, and one in Paris as far as the breakdown of the culture gradually. But just real quick, the, the reason we do business with some of those countries in the Middle East, I'm not agreeing with it. Um, you know, sometimes the uh, enemy of your enemy is your friend. And so <laughs> if I had to sum it up in a word there, Kevin, I would just say it's greed. Well, no, I, I, I understand the oil argument, and, and to your point, Obama's kept us from creating our own oil base so that we have to continue to do business with the Saudis and others. But that being said, it used to be that we had very large re warehouses there of equipment ready to go if something broke out in the Middle East. And so that's part of the reason that we used to do business with the Saudis. We would have had an even better location if we got, wouldn't have gotten pulled out of Iraq. In, instead of leaving 10,000 troops behind, 5,000 on all side, 5,000 blood. But that's another story. But that's part of the reason we do business with some of those countries over there, because we've got to have a platform to, you know, project from. That being said, back yeah, to your and, original... And in saying that, Kevin, we, we shouldn't be alienating our number one ally in Israel. I, I, couldn't, I could not agree with you more. However, you cannot... And remember, the Saudis, for... I got it since last war... The Saudis have, have actually, and the Egyptians have not been that big of an issue when it comes to Israel. And so, but it, let's say we moved everything in Israel. There's not enough geographical space for us to use it as a power projection platform. I'm not agreeing with doing business with them. I hate it, but I'm just telling you that's the re part of the reason oil was the big driver in the past. Part of the reason that's still been there for the last 10 years or 15 years is because outside of Kuwait, 
that was our power projection platform. In Kuwait, you got the same issue you got in all the other countries. So it, it is what it is. Back to your original question, the breakdown of Christianity and American culture. If you remember back in the early 90s, um, it was uh, uh, NYPD Blues or, or whatever the show was, and because uh, I was in college at the time, okay. and it was a national outrage when the one cop, they showed the back of it, they showed his butt on national Yeah, season. that was the actor Dennis Franz. So think about uh, Dennis Franz, and trust me, if there's anybody in Hollywood where you don't want to see their lower end revealed, it's Dennis Franz. <laughs> he's, not exa- he's not exactly an oil painting, as they say. Right, and so that was national outrage that that was in prime time. And now I can turn on any movie channel on cable, and I can see soft porn at, at 8 o'clock in the afternoon. You're right. And, and Kevin, Kevin, so it's what... It, it's what Dr. Savage talks about in Government Zero. It's about whittling away, whittling away our symbolism, whittling away our traditions so incrementally that you're not going to, when, it, when you realize, hey, what are we doing here? It, it, is, it, it is going to be too late, and this is seemingly the master plan. Absolutely. And the only other thing I'll mention, and I'll let you go, is if you look at Paris about four or five years ago, they had a bunch of protests because their unemployment rate in 21 to 30-year-olds, I think, was... I, re- I remember that, yes. Something. They had all those protests, and, and most of those protests were from the immigrant side. And the problem they had with those when they were trying to break them up was because it was too dangerous for the police officers to go into those neighborhoods and patrol the neighborhoods because they had allowed them to create their own little mini countries inside of France. And now you see what you have. And that's the exact same thing that we're looking at right now with with the current president and and others would like to see. They'd like to see Greece for whatever reason. They'd like to see us be Greece. They'd like to see us be Spain. They'd like to see us be France. And all you got to do is look at those governments, the issues they have, the problems their economies have, problems their economy has with younger unemployed people. Just keep going down the list. And and no, it, Kevin, you're right. Listen, any 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 version of communism and socialism, no one can cite me historically one that has ever worked. And 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 you know, under Lenin and others, you know, tens of millions of people ha- have perished uh, because of it. And I'm not even talking about the ones he murdered. I'm talking about the ones that starved to death due to the failing economy. But Kevin at WMAL in D.C., thanks for your call. We'll take a quick break. Uh, If you haven't done it yet, the end of the year is coming, and if you want to be in touch with what's going to happen in the political realm over the next year, the answer is government zero, no borders, no language, no culture. I got hooked after the first nine words. I read the first paragraph, and I read some other captions. Buy it for yourself. Buy it for a friend. But definitely buy it. You're listening to The Savage Nation. Welcome back to the Savage Nation, the home of government zero, no borders, no language, no culture. And, of course, check out Dr. Savage on Facebook. His page is the one with the book. Um, uh, at the bottom of the hour, we're going to shift gears. I want to get in as we hit the home stretch of the show, talk about the presidential election and what's going on there with Trump and Rubio and so on and so forth. I cited it earlier a CNN poll that said uh, the majority of Americans feel that terrorists are, are winning you know, the war on terror, even though you're not supposed to say that anymore. I'm going to cite here another CNN report that says... Uh, In advance of President Obama's final year in office, there is widespread dissatisfaction with the way the country is and has been governed. Now, trust me, it pains the people over at CNN that they have to do this, that they have to report on this. If they could, they would probably skew the results, but they can't because there's too many eyes uh, looking in from too many directions. You've got um, the majority of people, both Republicans and Democrats, both sides of the political island, express uh, sentiments that 75% of Americans say they are dissatisfied. I mean, that is incredible. 69% are somewhat angry about the way things are going in the country. It is truly an incredible phenomenon. This is the fuel that is rising Donald Trump to the top, that has risen him to the top, excuse me, and is keeping him there. What else is fueling it is the D.C. stupidity. Politicians in Washington, D.C., they think you're dumb, okay? They think I'm dumb. They think Dr. Savage is dumb, okay? And everybody associated with support for Trump is a bigot and a racist and so on and so forth. They can't comprehend the anger that people are feeling, the insecurity that they're feeling over terrorism, the insecurity that they're feeling over the economy. Okay, This is uh, something that it's all overlapping. 
People get up and, and they go, if I go to the mall, am I going to get shot? If I go to the mall, can I afford anything? You know, Christmas just just went. I'm sure a lot of people spent money on their credit cards to make their kids happy because it's Christmas time that they don't know what they're going to do next month when the bills come in. And politicians in Washington, D.C., uh, many of our WMAL listeners to the Savage Nation know, okay, this is fueling Donald Trump and the powers that be, the Roger Ailes, the Charles Carl Thomas, the, the Jeff Zuckers, they just don't get it. 75% dissatisfied. You are listening to The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Welcome back to The Savage Nation. Lou Pate here with you. Glad to be in for Dr. Savage. He will return tomorrow. In the meantime, hey, don't get me in trouble, folks. Check out Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. You're definitely going to want to check it out if you if you missed it earlier. I read some segments from there. It's one of those things where it grabs you and it does not let go. Uh, and if you're into the whole political scene, uh, you're definitely going to want to read it. And you will be smarter for it. You will impress your friends. And uh, then from there, uh, you can then impress everybody else. So um, we were talking about terrorism and the issue of terrorism as we head into New Year's Eve. Terrorism is on the mind of Americans. I talked about a, 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 what people thought was a gunshot at Disney World on Christmas and people running. Turned out to be a false alarm. Uh, 6,000 cops are going to be New Year's Eve in Times Square. And a news just breaking on Reuters that Brussels New Year's fireworks has been canceled over attack fears. Uh, the Belgian authorities uh, in the capital of Brussels uh, just today called off the city's traditional New Year's Eve fireworks display, citing fears of a militant attack. Now, you know, we have the head of ISIS, uh, what's his name, Badadi, Baghdadi, coming out and saying the caliphate is growing and we're going to get you on your own soil. And as, as Robert and Jim and I have talked about, when, whenever terrorists come out like this, you always have to be mindful of it. Obviously, you're not just going to dismiss it. But when they do hit, it's when you least expect it. Paris. Um, both times, Charlie Hebdo and and the concert and the soccer stadium and the restaurants, uh, San Bernardino, 9-11, and so on and so forth, uh, Mumbai, Bali, uh, the trains in, in Madrid, and so on and so forth. There was no warning before that. They didn't come out and say, we're going to do this. They just do it. And so, obviously, there's threats out there for New Year's Eve in Las Vegas and New Year's Eve in, in, in New York, where all the big ones are. But they don't cancel anything. They prepare for it. For the Brussels authority, for the Belgian authorities in the capital of Brussels to cancel their fireworks, tradition in that country tells you something that they know more that they probably can't even tell us. And uh, it, it, is, it is a responsible act. It's sad for the people there. It's sad for the kids. It's a horrible way to say goodbye to an old year and ring in a new year. But um, federal prosecutors said that, that two people have suspected, who were suspected of plotting an attack in Brussels on New Year's Eve, they've been arrested during house searches in different parts of the country. And together with the interior minister, they, this is a quote, together with the interior minister, we've decided to not have the celebrations on Thursday evening, end quote. Um, that was the Brussels mayor said that. And I'll tell you what that is. Okay, when they arrested those two people and they got them under the light, I don't know if they were putting pliers under their fingernails and squeezing or if they just cooperated, but they told them something. They told them information that caused them to sell to cancel this celebration. This just not this does not happen. They just not say, "Oh, we're going to cancel it." It's not the way it's not the way big cities around the world works. This would have to be you've heard the term credible threat. The term credible threat is almost you know, it, it's getting jaded now. People hear terror, uh, credible threat, and they're kind of like, ah, hear that all the time. We heard it's a credible threat. For Brussels to cancel their New Year's fireworks, you heard it here on the Savage Nation first, um, is a big deal. Um, hopefully nothing will happen there. We'll keep our eye on the situation. But that is a fear that many people here in the United States have. And we've talked a lot about terrorists today. We talked a lot about ISIL. We talked about what I call the uh, cancer that is Islam. We've talked about political correctness is domestic terrorism. That's my own saying. I love it. Feel free to borrow it because that's what it is. We're too busy in this country paying attention to being politically correct. And 
while Obama and the left in this country is doing this, steering us in this direction to focus on gay cupcakes and to focus on whether someone can shine their shoe, or focusing on whether a, a white cloud is racist and so on and so 